rainbows and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a lot of fun. We are doing a royal family character Q&A video and it's just going to give you guys a lot of insight on the characters. You'll get to know them better. There are definitely going to be spoilers in this video. So if you have not seen my royal family series yet, then I will link the playlist to those in the video description below. As this video is being made, we are currently on season two, episode 31 of the royal family. So I just posted episode 31 a few days ago. So that is where we are and the questions will be based off of the story plots that have happened. I am specifically answering questions for my royal family characters in this video. So basically any questions you guys had for the characters, like how they're feeling and some, some story plot stuff as well. But I do have two other Q&A videos. The first one that I'm going to be linking in the description below is a Q&A video that is just information about me. So I had you guys ask me questions about myself so you could get to know me. And then the second one is more questions about my channel and the Royal Family series, especially some about my Dynasty series as well. So I'm not going to be answering any questions that I have already answered in those videos. So if you want to watch those, I will link those in the video description too. I will also be showing the character descriptions for the answers for my Royal Family personality quiz video. So that video I did post a few days ago, I will also link that in the description below. So if you have not taken the personality quiz yet, you definitely can to see which character you're most like. So some people wanted to see the description of all of the characters. I was limited on how many characters I could provide as answers, so not all the characters are in there, but I will just do like a video montage of screenshots of all the characters at the end of this video. I actually got this idea from two people named Tally and Evie, who I follow on Instagram. They do this with their characters in their Instagram screeny stories, which I did not know was a thing until very recently and until I found their Instagrams, but it's so cool. People like create their own stories with screenshots and they like kind of like how I do my machinimas, but they're screenshots on Instagram. So you like swipe for the next story slide and it's so interesting. I love their stories and they do the Q and A for their characters on their Instagram. But for them, it's like you can ask the character a question and then they will answer as that character with text. So I will be answering the questions in this video that you guys had for my characters as me, but I'll be answering for them. But yeah, definitely make sure you guys check out their stories. I'm obsessed with them. They have like amazing characters and amazing story plots and just like very detailed scenes. Their Instagrams is Tally's is Tally X Sims and Evie's is, I think it's Psychosmic. It's spelled S-E-O-K-I-S-M-I-C. So I'm going to put their Instagram handles in the description below. And I'm also going to put Instagram handles of other Simmers that I follow who have Instagram stories that I also really love. I just like, I love all of them. I just can't name all of them right now, but you can find the list of them that you guys definitely need to make sure you check out. So hit that like button if you are excited for our character Q&A video. Sit back and relax, because this is just going to be a very like casual conversation. And I'm going to just let you guys in on my ideas and my characters, and you guys will get to know a bunch about them. I've got my tea here in my Chibi Amira cup, because we might be spilling some tea in this video. So let's go ahead and begin. So these questions are really not in any particular order. I tried to group some of them, but they're not all grouped. I'm also not going to answer anything that I know I will be covering in a future episode that I haven't introduced yet. So like some people suggested some things and I might have already had that in mind, but I don't want to spoil anything for everyone. But I will talk about some things in future episodes that we have already talked about, if that makes sense. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This will be fun. I love talking about my characters in my series, so I could honestly go on for hours but I won't. I won't go on for hours in this video. So the first question is, how does Kellen feel now that Henry has passed? Does he somewhat regret leaving? How does he feel about Amira taking the throne? So that is a group of questions, which is totally fine. So how does Kellen feel now that Henry has passed? So obviously Kellen is really sad. He loved his father. He wasn't super, super close with his father. Not like Amira and a Henry, but he was still close with him. Kellen's just very quiet. He keeps to himself a lot. He definitely does not regret abdicating to Amira and he is very confident in his sister. He's very happy for her. Kellen feels like Amira deserves this. Kellen has just always, like when he grew up a little bit more as a child, he just didn't understand why Amira wasn't the heir because he knew that in some other kingdoms, this is around the time where Nea was 
was the first female monarch of Oasis Springs. So when he found that out, he was just kind of confused as to why he was the heir and not his sister Amira. Plus Amira had just had a lot more leadership traits. Kellen loves his sister so much and he's just very happy with his little family, with Megan and William. And they do a lot of traveling and they help out the less fortunate and he's just a lot happier with that lifestyle. But he's definitely going to be very supportive of his sister being queen. So the next few questions are about Araminta, Han, Charles, and Kimberly. So first one is, does Han want to ask Araminta out on an official date? Yes, he definitely does. He just doesn't know how and he's very shy. Next question is, how does Princess Araminta feel about Princess Kimberly? I think this is a really good question. So with Araminta and Kimberly, Araminta doesn't really know Kimberly that well. She is pretty good acquaintances with Kimberly's older sister, Arya. Araminta was a lot more angry at Charles because people didn't know that Charles and Araminta were trying to work things out. And Kimberly knew that they were together and had been dating but she thought that they broke up. I know I had mentioned in a previous video when this whole thing with Kimberly and Charles happened that Kimberly wanted to apologize to Araminta, but what happened was Arya ended up texting Araminta and just saying that her sister feels really bad. She just wants to make sure Araminta is okay because Araminta didn't really mention if her and Charles were still a thing, but she knows that they had been dating for a really long time, so that's why Kimberly felt bad. So then that's why Arya reached out to Araminta. But Araminta, I think just the fact that Kimberly felt bad and that she knew that Kimberly wanted to apologize. Araminta is such a good person that she was just saying like, no, it, like it's okay. Don't worry about it. Tell her not to worry about it. So Arya just said that to Kimberly and Kimberly was like, okay, like she felt a lot better. So yeah, that's how Araminta feels about Kimberly. There's just not that many feelings towards her just because they don't really know each other that well. And Araminta sees more Charles at fault than Kimberly. Next question is, does Araminta forgive Charles for what he did. I don't think she's completely gotten over it yet. They haven't really talked about it. And Araminta, I think, was more upset that Charles got in a fight with Han at the debutante ball. So I think Araminta is slowly getting over it, but she hasn't officially had a conversation with Charles yet saying like, I forgive you. And the next question is, is Charles doing better? Do you think him and Araminta will be able to get over each other? So Charles was doing better and then King Henry, his father died. So now he's more upset about that. Charles is just, he's going through a lot. I do believe that time really helps heal things. So over time, I think that him and Araminta will be able to get over each other. And then do Kimberly, Aisha, and Manuel know about Arya and Gabriel sneaking around? If so, how do they feel about it? So Kimberly knows because Arya told her about it. Kimberly and Arya are very close because they're also really close in age. Aisha knows because she accidentally saw Gabriel sneaking into the palace. Aisha and Arya's bedrooms are really close to each other and the windows in that palace are very open. So she saw him sneaking in through a window and Manuel does not know. He does not know about it. Next question is, is Johan still trying to bring back May or has he stopped? And then I saw another question that was also similar to that. Someone else asked, does Johan and Sadira have a happy marriage? Does he still love Princess May? So Johan and Sadira, they do have a happy marriage and he has gotten over May, but Sadira and Johan both share the same connection because they both miss May because May was Sadira's cousin. So Sadira does understand that. But yeah, it's been like years, like it's been almost 20 years since May passed away and Johan gave up on trying to bring her back to life because he was trying to do that, but he was not able to, he was not able to figure it out. So here's just a little spoiler of what I am working on. One of a few in this video that I will talk about. So I am working on a machinima for Princess May's death and like the truth behind it because we have not really established how she passed away and I have created a story for it so you guys will actually get to see. So I'll be doing that in a few weeks and you guys will get to see the truth behind Princess May's death, which I think you guys are going to enjoy because it's going to be pretty dramatic. Next question is, how does Genevieve feel about Cornelius's behavior? Does she want to be queen? And also to follow up with that, this question is, does Prince Cornelius 
Cornelius want to be king? So Genevieve, she is definitely Miss Perfect. She likes to follow the rules. Her and Cornelius, they're not close, but they were closer when they were kids. And then Cornelius became just really, really angsty. Genevieve tries to stay out of the whole situation with Cornelius and their parents because I think she's kind of tried to help before and Cornelius has kind of brushed her off. They have had really good moments though. Like Cornelius pushes away most of his family, but when it comes down to it, if someone were to hurt Genevieve, Cornelius would definitely stick up for his sister. With Elena and Juliet, Cornelius is not as close with them. They're a good amount younger than Genevieve and Cornelius is. So Cornelius just sees them as his annoying little sisters because they're like really close and best friends and like just like super giggly and silly and Cornelius just hates it so much. So he's not close with his two youngest sisters with Elena and Juliet. He's a little bit closer to Genevieve, but he still has not talked to Genevieve much. Like for the past few years, they just have not been as close. And then does Genevieve want to be queen? No, not really. So with Genevieve, she's very poised and like, I think she would make like an amazing queen, but abdicating and just like handing the throne off to the next in line, I don't think is as easy as you guys think it is because most people have the mindset of they would not become the monarch unless the person in line in front of them were to like die or something like that. Like it would have to be really serious. Like it's not a thing to just say, oh, they're not fit, give it to someone else with these royal families. Like I know that could be a thing in other ones, but that doesn't really work with these royal families. Kellen abdicating and Amira becoming the heir was a very special situation. It was also just Windenburg modernizing their rules and just having like their first female monarch. But I don't think it's crossed Genevieve's mind that she would become monarch. Like that just isn't a thought that occurs to her. Like she doesn't sit in bed thinking I could do a better job than Cornelius. She sits there thinking like he needs to do better to work to be a better monarch, not I should be the monarch, if that makes sense. And then does Prince Cornelius want to be king? I think this is a really good question because in the next episode, we will get a lot more into how he thinks and all that stuff. Cornelius just feels very smothered. I'm gonna talk about this in the next episode too, but like all the attention is focused on him. He's the only boy. He's the oldest of four. He's the heir. So there's just so much pressure on him and he's already so emotional. So that is why he is the way he is. Cornelius does hope that it would get better if he were to become king and that he wouldn't have his parents just breathing down his neck the entire time. So I think that's why he wants to be king. Next question is, how does Takashi feel about his sisters and their situations? So Takashi tries to stay out of things as much as he can. I've mentioned in previous episodes that he is a big class clown. He likes to be funny and he does that for the attention. Like it's kind of his way of acting out just because of the environment that he grew up in. And it's also a way for him to stay positive and ignore the problems that he has at home. Takashi loves Araminta. Araminta looks out for him. Araminta gives him advice. Takashi is a lot younger than Araminta is though. So they're not super, super close. Like they're not like best friends or anything, but Araminta is just a really good big sister and Takashi appreciates that. Takashi has a had good talks with Anya, but they are not what you would think as a typical talk. Like Anya teaches him things. To give you an example, when Takashi was younger and he was like trying to learn how to throw a ball, like Anya would just be like, why, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing it like that? Like, no, you're supposed to do it like this and like just show him how to do it that way. But yeah, overall Takashi is not that close with Anya and he knows that they don't get along and he just kind of like lets it happen. Like he tries to stay out of it and does his own thing. Next question is, how do you plan to bring Charlotte and Harmony back into the equation? Is Harmony even alive anymore? So Harmony is still alive. They are in serious hiding and like they had to change their names again and like disguise themselves again. They are coming back in a future episode. Guys, don't worry. It's just, there's other stuff that has to happen before they come back. So I have already a whole story plot planned out, but it's probably not gonna happen at least for another 10 to 20 episodes. I will tell you that now. I know that's a lot. I'm so sorry. I it, Probably not 20 episodes. I take that back. Probably like more like 10 to 15 episodes, but I know exactly how I am bringing them back. I will tell you guys now they will be coming back because I know they come up a lot. 
sudden people ask about them, but they are going to be trying to get revenge again. Next question is, it seems like the Windenburg royal family has a history of depression. Is this true or just outside circumstances coincidentally occurring to lead to this? So the Windenburg royal family, they do have a history of depression and a lot of it, like with our current Windenburg royal family, like with Kellen and Charles and Amira and all them, it's just like a genetic thing. So they're more prone to it. And of course it doesn't help that like our current Windenburg family has had so many tragedies, like first with Alice and then Princess May. So yeah, in short, it does run in the family. Next questions are about Diana. So does Princess Diana still have a crush on Makai? Yes, yeah, she still does. She has not seen Makai in a while because he has been taking care of his mother. So I think the crush has kind of died down a little bit. But Diana actually, cause she was like really irresponsible as a child. So I thought she was gonna be super wild when she got older, but she is mostly irresponsible just because she daydreams a lot. So she just gets in her head kind of, oh, kind of like Anne Shirley from Anna Green Gables. Her daydreams, they just distract her and like make her forget things that she's supposed to do. So that's kind of where the irresponsibility comes from. So I think she just like daydreams about Makai sometimes. However, the crush is not a very serious thing. Like she's not like in love with Makai. She just has a crush on him and thinks he's really cute and is very attracted to him. I think two things really stopping her is the age gap and also the fact that Makai and Amira were a thing because she loves her sister. She loves Amira. Amira is like her biggest role model. So she looks up to her. So she wouldn't want to hurt her like that in any way. And then another question to go along with that was how does Makai feel about Diana and vice versa? I just told you how Diana feels about Makai. For Makai, he just sees Diana as Amira's younger sister. I mean, he watched her grow up. Amira and Makai were together all through Diana being like a baby all the way until she was a child. So Makai thinks she's really sweet, but he sees her as Amira's younger sister. Next question is also about Harmony. Just asking about how the Harmony drama is going and asking about the governess and if she's still alive. So yes, the governess Lucy, she is still alive, but the governess actually like started her own life away from them. The governess did not have anything to do with Naya's kidnapping. So I will give you guys a spoiler since there were so many questions about it. And since it's so long until it's actually gonna happen. So I'll give you guys a little bit. So they do have a plan to, I'm like choosing my words very wisely, to attack the Oasis Springs palace by doing something that might destroy it. So what Harmony would want to do is kill the Oasis Springs royal family so that her daughter would be next in line for the throne. So yeah, that's all I'm going to tell you guys about that. But I feel like that was a lot. We'll come back to them. You guys will see. It'll be very dramatic. I'm like worried about it too. It's very, I'm very anxious about it and it's not gonna happen for a while, but I still like think about it sometimes and I'm like, do I really want to do this? I don't know. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about them. So that just gave you guys, hopefully that gives you guys enough until it happens. Next question is, how is the Cornelius and Anya situation going? So I did mention this in the last episode of the Royal Family that there's just nothing there between them. Cornelius did have a crush on her growing up, but then they just realized it's just as friends and that he just looked up to Anya just because Anya does her own thing. Like Anya's always just been very strong and she's not afraid to just fight for herself and fight for what she wants. So Cornelius just really looked up to that. Cornelius and Anya just really don't fit together. Anya is way more evil and Cornelius is just angsty. Like to give you guys an example of how they are, if someone were to ask them if they would ever kill someone, Anya's response would be, well, that depends, what did they do? And then Cornelius's response would be, what, no, what the heck, what's wrong with you? No, I would never do that. And then Cornelius would go around telling everyone that that person who asked them is a freak. So hopefully that gives you guys just a little bit of insight of like how different they are. Next question is, Amira, are you going to tell Alice May who she was named after? Yes, definitely. Amira is definitely going to tell Alice May that she was named after Alice May's grandmother and aunt. I definitely think Amira wants to keep their names alive, keep the memory of her mother and sister alive. Next question is, how does Johan and Amira feel about each other? So they both grew up thinking that they were going to have to get married. They never got along as teenagers. Amira was such a wild kid and a wild teenager. She was like flirting with a bunch of guys. And then Johan loved Princess May and really did not like Amira that much. Then after May died and they thought they were going to have to get married, they did go through some stuff and they argued a lot just because they were both going through it, but they didn't really know how to open up to each other about it. But then when Amira and him didn't have to marry each other anymore, they did get along a little bit better. They just know so much about each other. Like they've known each other their 
their entire lives. So now they are a lot better friends, like the type to where when Johan's father died, Amira made an effort to go reach out to him and make sure he was okay and that kind of stuff. Also, he's married to her cousin, Sadira, who Amira always really liked growing up too. But now Johan really respects Amira and Amira respects him. So they are a lot better off now than they were as kids. Next question, I love this one, is Makai. If I told you that you were absolutely free to do whatever you want with no consequences, what would you do? So we are focusing on Makai in the next episode. If he could do anything he wants with no consequences at all, Makai would run away to a small island in Sulani, tell Amira that he loves her, get married to her, and have a small family with her. So yeah, but we'll focus on him in the next episode. Next question is, are Bellatrix and Samaria ever going to get married? What would their title be? So I think it's a little too early to tell if they're gonna get married. I hope they get married because they're really cute together. They also, like they're very close and stuff, but they haven't been together for that long. And then what would their title be? I don't even, they don't know that. I don't know that yet. They're both princesses, like the daughters of kings and queens, so they would probably have a pretty good title. And then next question is, do Ava, Diana, and Amira know about Bellatrix and Samaria? They do. Bellatrix told them first before she told her father. Actually, Amira was the one who encouraged her. Amira and Charles were the one who encouraged her to tell her father. And then when she had told them about it, she told her mom, Queen Evangeline, and then she said, I'm going to tell dad too. Next question is, did Queen Nea and King Henry ever have a relationship Nope, they did not. That's a very short answer, but no, they did not ever. The next question is, will Queen Amira and Jabari have another baby? Yes, I am planning on them to have another baby, but it's not going to be until Alice May is closer to aging up into a child. And then what is happening with the Windenburg royal family now that Amira is queen? So Charles, Bellatrix, Diana, and Evangeline, they're all going to move to the other palace, the second palace that they have, the summer home. But that's not going to be for another episode or too, just because they're all still in mourning from King Henry and they don't like they want to all be there for each other. The Windermere royal family is just like very much about family and being there for each other. Like you will see that in all of their character descriptions from the personality quiz. But they are going to move to the other palace soon and you guys will still see a lot of them though. We'll bring them back all the time. They'll visit all the time. Next question is for Amira. Are you excited about becoming queen and do you think you will be a good ruler like your father? Amira is just very sad about her dad still, so I wouldn't say excitement is the right word. She's just always associated her becoming queen with her father would have passed away. So I think it's kind of been something that she's always been anxious about. When she was younger, she did want to be queen. Like she thought that she should be queen. And then by the time she got older, she just changed as a person. And then when it actually happened, she was like, this was just not what I was expecting. Like this is what I've wanted when I was a kid, but I didn't think it would actually happen. That's also kind of made her lose confidence in becoming queen and seeing if she could actually do it. She's just worried because she hasn't been preparing her whole life like most monarchs have. She also does doesn't think anyone could live up to her father. So she looks up to her father so much. She's going to try her best to become a really great ruler and a really great queen. But her mindset is she will never be as good as her father. But my opinion, she's going to be a great queen. She's going to be awesome. And then the last question is for Queen Evangeline. What are you going to do now that his majesty is gone? So Evangeline, I think it's, it's too early for her to start thinking about this. I mean, this just happened. So she's definitely in mourning. I will answer my thoughts on it though. Evangeline definitely wants to focus on her kids because they're still kids. They're still teenagers. She wants to make sure that they're okay and that she is able to teach them what she wanted to. Like her and Henry just really want to instill a lot of good qualities in their kids. So she wants to continue to do that. Evangeline is still really young. She is only a little bit older than Amira is. So we'll see what she does because she really has like her whole life ahead of her still. But right now she's just going to focus on her kids and then she'll figure out what to do when her kids grow up. So yeah, guys, that is all the questions. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys were able to learn a lot about our characters. Again, I didn't really answer some questions because I knew they would be coming up in a future episode. Since we have so many characters, I know that some of the storylines like go kind of slow. And that's because I do want to focus on as many characters as possible. And I usually focus on the older characters. So some of like the younger teenagers, like they will get their time. They will get their turn. But I'm going to end this video here. If you guys want to see all the personality descriptions, 
impressions of the royal family characters. Stay tuned, I will just do like a little slideshow of those. Feel free to comment any thoughts that you guys have, just always make sure to be respectful. But I definitely would love to hear what you guys think about my answers and just any of the story plots coming up too. Hit that like button if you have not already. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!